Allah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters um, and welcome to another session of the Islamic Council of Europe uh, pre-Ramadan Q&A well Ramadan is literally around the corner um, we're glad to welcome you and alhamdulillah this is um, uh, the last stretch just before we kick off uh, Ramadan inshallah we uh, uh, expect it inshallah as a Thursday this week uh, to be in the blessed month uh, with the tawfiq of Allah. Um, so it's the last, as I said, it's the, it's the sprint is finishing. Um, a lot of us have been preparing for a while now, alhamdulillah, for this, uh, for the blessed month uh, to come. Um, I'm sure we've got a lot of different questions. Uh, it's not going to be a typical Ramadan. We already know that. Um, and uh, really, uh, that's why we've got forums such as this uh, put together so that you're able to ask your questions and you're able to get all of the answers that you need to really equip you to have the most fulfilling Ramadan, inshallah, uh, that you've ever had. And may Allah make that the case for all of us, inshallah. Uh, as always, we're very fortunate, alhamdulillah, to have our Sheikh with us, uh, Sheikh Haytham al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, welcome back, uh, my dear brothers and sisters. MashaAllah, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, uh, Bikas. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Very good. Yeah, they, sometimes they say not bad. I don't know why they say that, but uh, I prefer to say <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I'm very good. Alhamdulillah, good shit. That's uh, the first lesson that we have that you always are positive, have a positive language, and speak positively. Yeah, yeah. Not Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah Jalla make us among those who think positive of Him. May Allah Jalla make us among those who think positively all the time, and may Allah Jalla make us among those who will receive positive outcome in the day of resurrection. Um, so, okay, so we're not going to, uh, we're going to get, get straight into it. Just a couple of quick house rules. Um, so brothers and sisters, whatever questions you have, we've got, a, we've got a, a, some questions that you've sent through from beforehand. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll try and get through as many as we possibly can. We won't be taking any uh, sort of, we won't be unmuting anybody to ask a question as such. Uh, but as I said, if you put your questions on the chat, we'll do our best to get through as many as we possibly can uh, to get you the answers that you need. Okay, Sheikh, so I'm going to uh, kick off, inshallah. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, as I said before as well, you know, an atypical Ramadan, as we say, it's not, not what we're usually used to. Uh, it takes away some things that we're, we, we probably have been, obviously we enjoy and we look forward to, such as the, the masajid and the, the, the iftars, etc. cetera. But um, while the, Allah's taken that away from us, there's a lot more opportunity that we have. And inshallah, I, I look forward to uh, hearing a lot around that from yeah, you. Definitely. Um, so question number one, uh, is, uh, and as you can imagine, we're getting a lot of questions around Taraweeh because we can't pray Taraweeh in the, in the masjid this year. Um, so a question that's been put to us is how many Tarawehs can, can women read uh, at home? Please explain, are eight allowed or not? So this has been put specifically to women, but it's not a women specific question, I guess. It's uh, how many, how many Taraweeh can we read at home? Is it eight or uh, is it, should it be more? Yeah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ahli wa sahbihi ajma'in. Yes, this is a very common question. And uh, alhamdulillah, uh, Allah Jalla wa ala did not put any hardship on us. And the general ruling, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is that there is a room for uh, big flexibility in the nafil salah, apart from the five daily uh, obligatory prayers, we have flexibility in the nafil salah. And taraweeh, as we all know, is part of the nafil salah, uh, yani suppurgatory salah, optional salah. And taraweeh is uh, considered to be qiyamul layl. Uh, Allah Jalla Ala praised those who do Qiyamul Layl. Kanu qalilan minal layli ma yahja'oon. Wa bil ashari hum yastaghfirun. They used to sleep little uh, at night due to Qiyamul Layl. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam said, stick to Qiyamul Layl. Fa innahu da'abu salihin. This is the seer, this is uh, the way of the righteous people before you. In the other hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam said that uh, about Qiyamul Layl, 
The honor of the believer is establishing Qiyamul Layl. And uh, so this is Qiyamul Layl in general. And with respect to Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, that is called Taraweeh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever observed Qiyamul Layl during the month of Ramadan, uh, believing that Allah Jalla Ala is the one who commanded him or recommended him to do so, uh, then and seeking the reward behind that, he or she will have all their previous sins forgiven. Now, with regards to all of this was mentioned in general, no specific <coughs> number was specified, okay, which gives an indication that Qiyamul Layl is not bound to any number of rakats. And that was confirmed explicitly in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he asked him about Qiyamul Layl, the Prophet وسلم, said, Qiyamul Layl, mathna mathna, salatul Layl, mathna mathna, fa in khifta al fajr, fa outir bi wahid. If you are afraid that the fajr time will start, then make witter by one rak'ah. The scholar said, that said, taking from this hadith, that had the Prophet وسلم, legislated any specific number for uh, taraweeh or for qiyamul layl in general, he would have clarified it to this person who came to ask about night prayer. So this is a clear proof that there is no limit for Salat al taraweeh either upper limit or lower limit. And that was uh, the consensus of the scholars as well. Ibn Abdul Bar, rahimahullah, uh, he's a Maliki scholar, died 463, confirmed that it is the consensus of all the scholars that there is no limit, which means upper limit or lower limit for Salat al taraweeh So, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, let us please, let us yani, end this discussion and this debate about the 20 rak'ah, uh, 8 rak'ah, and let us pray whatever we can. The more is the better. And uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab established taraweeh as 20 rak'ah, and that's why most of the madahib or all the madahib took the uh, 20 rak'ah from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, from the practice of Umar ibn al-Khattab and the believers. And therefore, uh, if we pray 20 rak'ah, inshallah, we will be following that. If we can't pray 20 rak'ah plus the witr, which is three rak'ah, if, if we can't do that, then any amount, inshallah, will be considered qiyam al -layl whether we pray 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, okay? It was reported that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu prayed one rak'ah. During that rak'ah, he completed the entire Quran and that was inside the Kaaba. So he didn't pray uh, one or he didn't, sorry, he didn't pray 20 or 10. He prayed just one rak'ah. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would sometimes pray nine together. He would sometimes pray seven together, five together, three together. So there is a, a big uh, room for flexibility for Salat al -Tarawih. The key thing, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is not the quantity. The key thing is the quality. Yeah. Many people, unfortunately, took Islam as a very ritualistic kind of way of life. They do the rituals as uh, machines, uh, as robotic, uh, robots. Yeah, They don't look at the spirit of each of those activities. And the spirit, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is more important in many cases than the outward practice or the outward uh, image of the of some ibadat. Okay, I hope that it is clear, inshallah. Yes.
Alhamdulillah, good one to start with. This is uh, such yeah. a this topic is yeah. discussed more than people uh, actually end up praying. Alhamdulillah, yeah. for the clarification. Um, something slightly connected to again to Tarawih. Uh, brother is asking, is it permissible to lead the Tarawih prayer with the Musaf in the hand? Yeah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Now this is again a very common question because uh, so many people. Uh, so many people are asking this question in particular because as you know that it is very likely that we the lockdown will continue here in the UK and many other European countries not all of them but many of them and uh, we are not going to pray tarawih in the masajid and many people are not memorizing enough from the Quran to be able to recite uh, by themselves from their memory when they uh, read the taraweeh or when they lead others, okay, like uh, members of their families, uh, when they lead them for taraweeh or when they pray by, by themselves. Okay, so is it allowed to carry the mushaf or not? Uh, the, three scholar, the three schools of thoughts, the Malikis, Shafi'is, and, uh, and Hanbalis, uh, they allow this uh, in Nafil in particular. So they say that this is yani, allowed. Some of them, they say it might be makruh, but in Nafil Salah, they have a big flexibility and they allow it. Uh, and they say that it was reported in, uh, in Muatta al-Imam Malik, yeah, that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha commanded one of her servants to lead the taraweeh and he was uh, carrying something like a mushaf in his hand. Okay, so they used this as a proof. They also uh, mentioned another proof as well, yeah, uh, that it was practiced by some of the companions as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the Hanafi school of thought, on the other hand, they said that reading from the Mus'haf is likely to invalidate the Salah. Why? Because of two things. First of all, it includes uh, a lot of movements whereby you are going to carry the Mus'haf. <coughs> yeah, you are going to carry the Mus'haf, flip the pages of the Mus'haf. Uh, so this is yeah, and it considered to be a lot of movement. The second thing they mentioned is that uh, reading in the Mus'haf is uh, an act or uh, an action that is alien to the nature of Salah. Okay, so as if someone is talking to you and you are responding to him. So they consider recitation in the Mus'haf as uh, a different act or an action that is different from the norm of the Salah and they say, that it is, it invalidates the Salah. Now, I heard that some Hanafi scholars, they are doing ijtihad and they say that this is not definite. Uh, if, you don't if you don't do a lot of activities, or sorry, if you don't uh, move a lot when you read from the Mus'haf, okay, and then uh, the other reason might not, and the other reason might not be uh, a real reason to uh, to invalidate the salah and they attribute an opinion to the students of uh, imam abu hanifa anyway um i strongly believe that there is no problem whatsoever in uh, carrying a mushaf uh, and reading from the mushaf uh, especially as we said that the three madahib uh, they used uh, they, they they believe in this and they quoted uh, the hadith of or the practice of aisha and the practice of other scholars as well and uh, other early scholars as well and they know there is no clear proof against it uh, so i believe that it can be uh, done as an alternative for those who do not memorize the Quran. Definitely, if you memorize the Quran, then definitely reading by yourself 
is better. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. This uh, re reading from your memory is definitely better. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's exactly like I So just a couple of quick ones connected again, as you can yeah. imagine, a lot coming through around that way. Um, number one is, is, is there any, is it an established practice to finish the Quran in Taraweeh, which is something yeah. which is yeah. like, emphasized normally during Ramadan? Yeah. Uh, if so, should we be trying to do the same? Or yeah. and is there an issue if we don't manage to do it? Yeah, this is a very good question. Yeah, as uh, we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that recitation of Quran during Ramadan is one of the best acts and the Prophet وسلم, used to revise the Quran with Jibreel, used to study Quran with Jibreel uh, every Ramadan uh, once. And the Ramadan on the year the Prophet وسلم, passed away, he revised the Quran twice with Jibreel. Many scholars took from this that it is good to try at least to complete the Quran once during Ramadan. And they say, if that can be done during Salat al taraweeh then that would be better. However, all of them confirm that this is not a condition for Salat al taraweeh Salat al taraweeh will be valid uh, even if you do not complete the entire Quran. And here, let me say this, my dear brothers and sisters, that some of you might not memorize the Quran, read whatever you can read. Some people might say that we don't, um, we don't memorize a lot. We only memorize the three quls. Yes. Uh, and if you don't want to carry the Mus'haf or you cannot read from the Mus'haf, then do Qiyamul Layl while you are, uh, do Qiyamul Layl by repeating those, uh, those chapters that you memorize. Uh, look, when Allah Jalla commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Al-Muzzammil, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila. Surah Al-Muzzammil is among the very early chapters that were revealed. Yeah, among the very early chapters of the Quran that were revealed. Uh, so the, when Allah Jalla says, to the Prophet وسلم, establish Qiyamul Layl, half of it or less than half. And then uh, at the end of the surah, Allah Jalla says to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Rabbaka Yalamu Annaka Taqumu Adina min Thulutay Layli wa Nisfa wa Thulutha wa Ta'ifatum min Aladina Ma'ak. This means that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing Qiyamul Layl for maybe minimum three to four hours every night. On, in those three, four hours, what was the Prophet ﷺ reading? Because there were not many chapters of the Quran that were revealed. It looks like that they were reading whatever uh, was uh, revealed to them, even if it is minimum. Were they repeating that or not? Allah Alam, I don't know. But this means that maybe the focus was on the quality rather than the quantity. So, uh, brothers and sisters, whatever you memorize, read it in Salat al-Taraweeh. If you don't want to carry the Mus'haf, I recommend that you carry the Mus'haf and uh, read from the Mus'haf. If you can't, as we said, then repeat whatever you memorized. And this will be a very good opportunity. Please listen to this, brothers and sisters. This will be a very good opportunity for us to, dis to discover ourselves, to discover that we uh, are ignorant in terms of the memorization of Quran. Yeah, and we have been exposed to ourselves before ourselves. And therefore, every single one of you should take this opportunity as an opportunity to reconnect with the memorization of the Quran, not just reconnect with the Quran, no, with the memorization of the Quran, because one of the best acts that we can do is the memorization of Quran. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that Allah Jalla created the levels of Jannah according to the number of verses of the Quran. 
and you your status in Jannah will be equal to the verses of the Quran that you memorized. So if you memorize the entire Quran, obviously, and you are acting upon that, then your status will in Jannah, inshallah, according to this understanding, will be one of the highest. So brothers, sisters, let us take this Ramadan as an opportunity to change our status, our behavior, our attitude towards the book of Allah Jalla which is the best speech. Allah, as Allah Jalla says, Allah nazzala ahsan al hadithi kitaban mutashabihan matani. Allah revealed the best of speech. This book, Al Quran Al Kareem, Laqad anzalna ilaykum kitaban fihi dhikrukum. We have revealed to you a book by which you will be lifted or you were mentioned in this book as an honor for you. We can talk a lot about the virtues of the Quran, but inshallah, uh, this will be uh, enough or uh, this will be a short reminder for myself and for my brothers and sisters to change our attitude towards the book of guidance in the Quran the book of success in the dunya and in the akhirah. Yes. Sheikh. So um I'm gonna I'm gonna take one last question on this topic because I think this one's yeah. gonna maybe come up a bit, especially because we're praying yeah. in the households. Uh they say Islamic at what point can we refuse to pray behind an Imam? For example, if they don't have the right read the right knowledge and they don't care to improve themselves. Yeah, okay. The, let us, yeah, and maybe this question is invalid now because we are not praying behind Imam. Unless you are praying behind uh, a member of the family at home and you have maybe an issue with that member and that's why you are using this question maybe against that member. I don't know. But, yeah, and he, okay. Anyway, brothers, uh, sisters, if the recitation in general in general, yeah, is uh, understood, okay, then inshallah, it is uh, valid to pray behind this imam, yeah? Now, I know that some scholars have put certain conditions and some of them even, they went too far when they were discussing Allahnul Khafi, Allahnul Jali, yeah? And some of them, they invalidated the salah of a person who is making certain mistakes. I think uh, some of those scholars went a bit too far in, uh, in putting such conditions. I think Allah Jalla is more merciful than invalidating our salah if we put the maximum effort, yeah, uh, by just yani, a few mistakes. So I, I believe that uh, do as much as you can, improve your recitation as much as you can, fear Allah Jalla Ala as good as you can, and inshallah, uh, Allah Jalla Ala is, as we said, oft forgiving, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of brothers are breathing a sigh of relief on that one. So, yeah. um, okay, so Ramadan being the month when a lot of people Sheikh, tend to pay their zakat, there's quite a few questions around zakat which are coming yeah. up, right? Yeah. So, um, the first one I'll take is on whether you can pay zakat before the time it is due. So, the brother yeah. asks, Can I pay my zakat earlier than when it is due? Yeah, yeah, okay, this is a good question. This is a good question. Um, Alhamdulillah, uh, almost all the scholars allowed to give zakah in advance uh, because of a narration, uh, I think, uh, from Umar ibn al-Khattab that he wrote to uh, some of the companions that they can pay their zakah in advance. Yeah, And there are some narrations uh, of that account. So, uh, inshallah, that is not a problem at all that you can pay your zakah in advance. So, and see, the key thing is, rationally, what will be the harm? Yeah, 
you are going to give an amount of zakah now, sorry, you are going to give an amount of zakah in uh, two months, three months, and you are giving it in advance. Why that wouldn't be allowed? Uh, see, I, I remember one time a sister, she was calling me, etc., etc. Yeah, and she was, uh, sorry, she was calling me and she wants yani, an urgent answer. And I told her, what is the situation? I thought that there is an issue. She said, well, I paid more than my zakah. Yeah, my calculated my zakah, let us say 350 pounds or 360 pounds. And then I paid 380 pounds, for example. I said, so Allah will punish you because you gave more charity. <laughs> so she said, uh, is it? I said, I'm asking you. She said, no. I said, so, yani, you gave more. That will invalidate your zakah. She said, yeah, but if I pray Dhuhr 5, this will invalidate my Dhuhr. I said, that's good, mashallah. You are making analogy on Dhuhr. Why? I said to her, aren't we allowed to give more charity? And the charity is not all connected. Yeah? So that is not a correct analogy. So definitely, uh, if you give more or you give earlier, inshallah, that will be absolutely fine. And just to clarify, Sheikh, when you say paying earlier, we are saying earlier in the sense of earlier than your zakat date, when your yes. zakat will be calculated. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And not earlier in the terms of when you've had it for a whole, for the whole the uh, for the lunar for the lunar period. Not from from not in advance from that perspective that you've had to have it for a lunar period, and you choose to pay it before you've had it for a whole lunar period. This is before your zakat date has come. You can still. No, pay. it is the same. Both are the same. Right. Uh, both are the same. Imagine my zakat. Let us yeah. say is due to in uh, in uh, Dhul Hijjah, the month of Dhul Hijjah, because as you said, okay, we give our zakah on the lunar year. So my zakah is due on Dhul Hijjah. Mm -hmm. And I gave it on Ramadan. That is absolutely fine. I My zakah is due on Dhul Hijjah because I started giving zakah on Dhul Hijjah. Yes? the month of Hajj, let us say 20, 30 years ago. And every time it comes on Hajj time. So in this time, I said, let me give it on Ramadan. Yeah, that is absolutely fine. And next year, you can either give it in Ramadan or you can give it again in Dhul Hijjah. I recommend brothers and sisters that you give it in Ramadan Obviously, because Ramadan is more rewarding, uh, charity in it is uh, more rewarding. But the other thing is because, inshallah, you will not forget. Uh, the other day I was on Islam channel and uh, a sister, she said that she did not give her zakah for the last four years. She forgot. I came across a person who did not give his zakah for the last 10 years. And these are good practicing people. They are not those who neglect zakah. So brothers, sisters, be careful of zakah. Don't delay it, yeah? Pay it in advance. That is absolutely fine. Trigger uh, or have something to trigger it so you remember it, so you don't forget it, yeah. Okay, so uh, continuing on zakat, these are two connected questions, one leads to the other. Number one is, do you need to pay zakat on shares which are being held for the long term? And connected to this is another one where a brother says that he was given some shares that he had for a three, that with a long term view, he had them for a three year period and will continue to have them going forward. And the first time that he's earned on them, is after three years. So what that means is, A, he can't access those shares. He's not going to be selling them. The first dividend he has received is just now, after three years of having them, he couldn't get access to it before that. Yeah, yeah. And what would he be paying zakat on in that yeah. scenario? Okay. Brothers, 
and she says, please listen carefully regarding paying zakah on share. Yeah, because it is very unfortunate that this topic is misunderstood easily. Okay, now shares. We have, we can look at shares from two perspectives. Shares that you intend them in order to receive the dividend. Yeah? Okay. The dividend is likely to be given uh, on a yearly basis or sometimes it can be given uh, on a monthly basis or every quarter, something like this. So this is one type. The other type of shares, those shares that we are not interested in their dividends, we are interested in selling them when the prices of the shares go up. Yeah? So themselves are considered to be commercial commodities. Now, the first type of the shares, they are not necessarily commercial commodities. However, the second type is considered to be commercial commodities. Now, let us talk about the second type. Commercial commodities, as you know, that it is almost the consensus of all scholars based on the hadith. Uh, the companion said that the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to give zakah to give zakah on what we uh, dedicate for trading, yeah? And that was the practice of the Sahaba. So therefore, if it is, uh, if you have commercial commodities, you are buying and selling on those items, then listen, brothers, how you calculate your zakah. Imagine you invested in the beginning, let us say 3,000 pounds. So those 3,000 pounds, you bought commodities and you want to sell those commodities. Yeah? So now the 3,000 pounds uh, has been transformed into commodities, yet zakah is due in uh, due on those commodities because those commodities are saleable trading commodities and they are nothing but another form of the liquidity of the liquid money. So if uh, imagine you give your zakah in Ramadan, three months down the Ramadan, you took 3,000 pounds from your zakatable pot and those 3,000 pounds, you put them into business whereby you buy and sell commodities, okay? Now, in Ramadan, the coming Ramadan, you need to check how much cash you have and how much saleable commodities you have as well, the value of those saleable commodities. Okay, and you add the value of those saleable commodities to the actual cash you have, including any profit that you kept out of this business. So you add all together and you give 2.5% on that. Okay, so if you are investing in uh, a company and you are not interested in the dividends, you are interested in selling those shares when the prices go, when the price go up for those shares, then those shares should be treated as commercial commodities like mobile phones, computers, sofas, furniture, okay all these commodities. So you should treat those uh, stocks and shares like this and you add them, you add the value of them to your zakatable cash, okay, to your cash. 
Now, those commodities, how to evaluate their price at the time your zakah is due, it check if you were to sell those stocks and shares, how much you are going to get, okay? So the price of those shares or stocks, if it was to be, if they were to be sold now, is this much and therefore add this amount to your cash and to your gold, yeah, mainly to the cash, to the value of the gold. And if you have other saleable commodities, the third one, okay, and this fourth one is the saleable stocks and shares and give 2.5% on that. Now, this is the second type that we have discussed. The first type that we have discussed is what? Is you are investing in, uh, in companies and you are interested in the dividend, okay? So in this case, we need to look at the company you are investing in. If this company is a service company, so your 3,000 pounds went into the assets and it is not a sale, it, it did not go into saleable commodities, commercial saleable commodities, then there is no zakah on the 3,000 pounds because it went into assets. And the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no zakah in the laysa uh, ala al-Muslim fi abdihi wa la farasihi zakah. There is no zakah due on your horse or in your slave because those are what you own. Yeah? Okay. So they are not commercial commodities at that time. So uh, in that case, what do you do? In that case, you take the dividend, add it to your uh, pot of zakah, zakatable cash, add it to it. And when the zakah is due, for example, if we say that the zakah is due on 5th of Ramadan, then in 5th in of Ramadan, calculate all the cash that you had, whether irrespective of its source, yeah? Because some of it, the source of it is this dividend, and then give zakah on that, give 2.5% on that. Now, there is another case. If you put your money into this business, and this business is not services, so the 3,000 pounds, you put them into uh, with a brother, for example, who is trading on Amazon and he is buying and selling. So the 3,000 pounds actually, they were transformed into commercial commodities. So you should treat them as the very uh, first case that we have mentioned because the 3,000 pounds now is considered to be commercial commodities saleable commercial commodities it is considered to be another form of the cash equal to the cash so zakah is due on that now if you say that i put my money into this business and this business used part of my money for commercial commodities saleable commercial commodities and another part of my money it was used for fixed assets Okay, and a third part of my money was kept as a reserve, uh, as a reserve, then you give your zakah on the commercial commodities and the reserved money if the company doesn't give zakah, yeah, which is likely the case. So you give zakah on both the portion that was used as a commer uh, uh, for commercial commodities to buy and sell in them for trading and the reserve money, which, which is cash, but not on the 
portion of money that was used uh, to buy fixed assets or uh, for services. Okay, I hope that it is clear. Now, some people might say, why are you mentioning all these details? 3,000 pounds, let us give zakah on all of the money of the 3,000 pounds. That is better. But imagine, yeah, a person might say, well, my business is 30 million pounds. Yeah, I need to know which amount I must give zakah on and which amount I am not obliged to give zakah on. Then they need to go back to this, uh, these details that I have mentioned. I hope that you follow uh, those details and I hope that it is recorded, by the way, so maybe uh, people can refer to this explanation. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, will be recording in the background. This is a huge topic. As somebody who works yeah. in finance, we could keep talking about this and have sessions on this. Uh, but Jazakallah khair for that explanation. Uh, I'm going to move on a couple more zakat questions because it is, yeah. is, again, a big topic. Um, I'm, somebody has asked, do I have to pay zakat on gold jewelry that I received as a gift? If so, what happens if I don't have any other cash? How should I pay it? Yeah, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, now, zakah on jewelry that you are using, irrespective of the source, you bought them or they were gifted to you, okay? If you are using them and not uh, trading in them, if you are trading in them, as we have said, then you have to give zakah on them, okay? قولاً واحداً, يعني full stop. But if you are using them, wearing them, etc., then these scholars have five views regarding that. The summary of those views are two, okay? The first view says that there is no, it is not obligatory to give zakah, yes, and uh, uh, because we will come to the Adilla and the second view says that you know you have to give zakah on it and the first view is the view of the uh, of uh, the majority of scholars yani Imam Malik Shafi'i and one of the opinions of Imam Ahmed the second view says no, you must give zakah. It is the opinion of the Hanafi school of thought and along with one of the opinions of the Hanbali school of thought. And they say that the Prophet وسلم, asked one girl who visited him and she was wearing a bangle. Yeah. So the Prophet وسلم, said, do you give the zakah of this? So she said, uh, no. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, do you, uh, said to her mother, do you like that Allah Jalla punishes you on the day of resurrection because of this? And they say that Allah Jalla says in the Quran, those who hold gold and silver and they do not spend them for the sake of Allah Jalla tell them about the punishment that they are going to receive on the day of resurrection. And Allah explained the punishment. So they said that this is a general, okay? This is a general statement. So we have to give zakah on this, on gold and silver, whether we are wearing it, whether we are keeping it, irrespective. The other scholars, they said, it was reported that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha did not give zakah of gold that she had for her children, okay? Uh, for, sorry, not for her children, obviously she doesn't have children, but for children that she was, uh, okay, in charge of, yeah? And they also mentioned some other reports of some of the yani, companions that they had uh, gold and they didn't give zakah on. The two views are there. I strongly believe, brothers and sisters, that it is better for you to give zakah on your jeweler. Yeah? Zakah, brothers and sisters, what is 
the word zaka called what purification and nama and uh, flourishment so purification and flourishment don't you want your money to be purified and uh, flourished we all want our zakat to be purified and raised yeah so our money we want it to 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 uh, be flourishing and purified so give zakat on that and remember the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma naqasa ma'lum min sadaqa sadaqa does not uh, sadaqa does not diminish your wealth in fact and it was mentioned in another narration it increases your wealth yeah so give zakah give zakah now if you say that i don't have cash okay come on now are you telling me that you have a lot of gold but you don't have cash how much is the zakah 2.5% only yeah and if if you have 1 kg of gold then how much is the zakah few hundred pounds you have 1 kg of gold but you don't have few hundred pounds find a way okay either you sell part of your zakah or your husband will pay zakah on your behalf of or uh, borrow money okay until you find cash do whatever you want to, uh, you can do in order to give your zakah brothers and sisters i found that many people are taking this zakah issue lightly yeah please please go and read about the punishment of those who do not give zakah wallahi it is horrible the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained the verse that we have just recited والذين يكنزون الذهب والفضة ولا ينفقونها في سبيل الله فبشرهم بعذاب أليم يوم يحمى عليها في نار جهنم فتكوى بها جباههم وجنوبهم وظهورهم هذا ما كنزتم لأنفسكم فذوقوا ما كنتم تكنزون. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, okay, in explaining this, he said that any person who does not give the zakah of his gold and silver, and he was mentioned also, he mentioned also the punishment of those who uh, do not give zakah on their cattle. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi spoke about, uh, for, let us mention uh, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about those who do not give zakah on gold and silver. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on the day of resurrection, yeah, on the day of resurrection, though this gold and silver will be beaten and made into plates. Please, brothers, sisters, listen. Listen carefully. They will be made into plates and they will be heated in the hell fire. And then those heated plates, they will be brought and your heads, your foreheads will be branded by them. Your sides will be branded by them. Your backs will be branded by them. As the scholar said, because the skin in the forehead is very thin the skin here on the sides is very thin and the skin in the back is very thin and very sensitive so you will be yeah or the person who did not give zakah he will be punished like this and he will be branded by those heated plates in hellfire and the prophet ﷺ said once those plates become cold they will be reheated again in the hellfire. Yes. And that process of branding the person who did not give zakah and then reheating those sheets of gold and silver, it will continue for 50,000 years, which is the length of the day of resurrection. Brothers, sisters, please think. I don't know why. I, to be honest with you, I become so, uh, you know, nervous when I hear about a person who doesn't give his zakah or a lady who does not give her zakah. I become actually nervous when they t call me and to ask me questions about some details because they don't want to give one pound more of the zakah and when i tell some of them be on the safe side and give more they say yeah but we don't 
think of that punishment. And as I said one time to some brothers, imagine an iron, yeah, iron that we use to, uh, okay, iron our clothes. Switch it on, plug it, okay, and let it be heated, the maximum heat. And try, try just to put it on your forehead or put it on your side, yeah? Can you bear that? Can any one of us bear that for one second? Less than one second, just like this? Wallahi, we cannot. Imagine if we are doing this all the time and if, we, if it goes cold, then we are reheating again. Why? Because we are so miser, so tight. We don't want to give our zakah. Wake up, wake up, brothers, sisters, those who do not give zakah or those who take the matter easily. Yeah, wake up. And on top of that, brothers, sisters, yeah, the Prophet ﷺ said, then he will go either to Jannah and Dinar. So this punishment only while we are waiting for what? The accountability. We are waiting, yes, in that difficult time, and then we haven't yet been to Jannah and Dinar. Look at this, let alone, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ said, your zakah, your sadaqah in general will never diminish your wealth. It will increase your wealth. It will put barakah in your wealth. And those who have been given a charity, they have seen this. They said, Wallahi, the more we give, the more Allah gives us. Shaytan promises you poverty. And Allah Jalla is promising you what? Maghfiratan minhu wa fadla, forgiveness and access in the dunya and in the akhirah. Yes, every single day, two angels come down, one of them. He says, Ya Allah, give more to those who give. Ya Allah. And the other one, he says, Ya Allah, give destruction to those who withhold. And so many, so many, so many. The last resort for the person, brothers, sisters, before he or she go to hellfire. Yani imagine a person, khalas, he ran out of all good deeds yeah all good deeds he ran out of all good deeds and he is about to be thrown into the hellfire you know what might save you from hellfire just one piece of date you gave us a sadaqa yes one piece of one date yes not even one pound one piece of date you gave as a sadaqa Allah out of his mercy he will look command the angels and he will tell them go look maybe you might find a simple charity done by this person go look for it in order for them to go and find that that is small a charity in order to save that person from the punishment of hellfire that's why the prophet وسلم, said Put a shield between yourselves and the hellfire, even by giving a sadaqah of just half a date. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then we are now arguing, yeah, but I have one million pound. If I give one million pound, if I give a 2.5% of it, which is 2,500 pounds, then my million will you know, be less. Brothers and sisters, please, I beg you, I beg you, wallahi, in the pulpit, in the khutbah, I, I rarely say I beg you, but I say to people, I beg you to give your zakah, yes, and to be more generous with Allah Jalla wa'ala, yeah, to be more generous with Allah Jalla wa'ala, because, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ when you are generous with Allah Jalla Allah will be more generous with you and you are, please listen to this, brothers, sisters, wake up. You are the first one to benefit 
from the money, from the charity you give. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. If that's not, if that's the motivation and what is, Sheikh, I'm sure. Inshallah, where there's a will, there's a way they'll find the money. So pay the zakah, may Allah enable all yeah. of us to do that before it's too late. I mean, Ya Rab. Um, yeah. um, just a couple of quick ones again, just zakat related because they're so key. One, I got, I've been asked this a few times already, Sheikh, this year. Do we still pay zakat al-fitr? Even though it's likely that we're not going to play, uh, pray uh, Eid Salah at the moment, is it what it seems? So, if we don't end up praying Eid Salah, do we still have to uh, pay Zakat al Fitr? Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. In Hadith ibn Umar and in Hadith ibn Abbas, in Hadith ibn, um, in hadith ibn Abbas, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zakat al Fitr, Tuhratan lil Sa'im. Allah jalla ala. Uh, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam obliged us to give Zakat al-Fitr as a purification for the fasting person. So Zakat al-Fitr, okay, the illa of it is what? Is the purification of the fasting person. Not you are able to pray Eid or not. Yeah? So if you uh, fasted the month of Ramadan, or even if you do not fast, okay? Give zakat al-fitr. As far as you have witnessed the month of Ramadan, then you must give zakat al-fitr. And brothers and sisters, again, yeah? Again, how much is zakat al-fitr? Yeah? One sa of food, of rice or grain, yeah? Or even pasta, which is two point, let us say half kg or 2.15 kg, okay? This is the sa. okay? How much, when we uh, go to certain charities who buy this and they distribute it to poor people, how much is it? 10 pounds? Yeah? Are we worried about giving 10 pounds? Come on, my dear respected brothers and sisters, yeah. So I'm going to move on now to some um, <clears throat> other questions, sisters-related questions. I'll do a couple yeah. of those. Yeah. Um, one of the sisters says that uh, I do not want to miss my ibadat during the and fasting in Ramadan. Uh, can I take medication to continue uh, fasting and delay my menstruation? Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. The scholars looked at this. Some scholars said that, uh, yes, you can take the medication in order to delay your period, in order to be able to fast with the people. And uh, there is no proof against that. Some other scholars said uh, that, no, you can't do this. Yeah, and they said, this is against the norm. Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one who created you, yeah? خلقكم, and Allah شيء, and Allah Jalla is the create is the one who created the menses. He created you to have your menses. And he is the one who says, Ya ayu aladina amanu, kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba aladina min kabliku. Oh, you who believe fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon previous people. And he is the one who commanded the Prophet وسلم, or he revealed to the Prophet وسلم, that women on their menses, they don't fast. Yeah. So why do you go against all of this? Some scholars said that we have consulted the doctors and not all of them confirmed that this medication is not uh, is not harmful. In fact, some doctors confirmed that this medication can be harmful. So I strongly advise you, sisters, that you just be what Allah Jalla Ala wanted you to be, and be as what Allah Jalla Ala created you to be. Yeah. So don't take medication, especially medication will disturb your period. And then you will ask questions. My period is this and that. Uh, can I fast? Uh, can I pray 
I don't know, etc., etc. Just be as Allah Jalla Ala created you. And uh, by the way, you are not going to miss. Yeah, you are not going to miss anything because Allah Jalla Ala is the one who commanded you to do so. Yeah, and therefore it is not in your hand. Generally speaking, Sharia, yeah, uh, says that if a person used to do something and then he could not do it uh, due to reasons out of his control or her control, it is very likely that they will be rewarded for such actions. They say, by scholars said that uh, because of Hadith al-Bukhari, that the Prophet وسلم, says, إذا مرض العبد أو سافر كتب الله له من العمل ما كان يعمل صحيحا مقيما. If a person becomes sick, yeah, or he travels, then definitely that will disturb his activities. However, Allah جل وعلا will record for him the actions that he used to do when he was uh, healthy and when he was not traveling. Yeah. زك الله خير شيخ. Sister asked a question. Um, she made intention to break her fast by participating in marital relations, but then she did not participate and do that. Does she still have to make up her fast by intending to break it during the month of Ramadan? So he said that again. She was involved in she, she, she relations. made the intention to break her fast by participating in ma fulfilling marital relations, but she didn't. Ah, then go ahead so and do she it. she intended to do that. Correct. But she didn't do, did she actually didn't do it, but she intended ah. to do it. So she's asking, did, do I have to uh, make up the fast for intending to break it during the month? Ah, okay, yes. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see, uh, the, the uh, scholars actually have two views regarding that. Some of them said that intending to break the fast, yeah, is actually breaking the fast right some of them they say that uh, no unless you uh, done something uh, that breaks your fast such as eating drinking or being involved in full sexual relationship or uh, vomiting intentionally these are the four acts that all scholars agreed that they break the fast yeah unless you do one of them then uh, you have not broken your fast by intention only now i prefer that if you if you intend and it was actually yani a confirmed intention and you were about to do something such as being involved in this sexual relation or eating or drinking and but it didn't happen for a reason out of your hand i prefer that you uh, make it up to be on the safe side yeah right okay. two medical related questions here uh, one is um a brother is asking that his daughter has been advised not to fast and so she will be paying the fidya uh, in order uh, as a as a expiation, he says, can she still try to fast later in the year when the days are shorter, or has the fidya expired her obligation? So she yeah. has pay the fidya, but yeah. Okay, this is a common question, brothers and sisters. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, Ya you alladina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam, or you who believe fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon previous nations, so you may attain at taqwa. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala, okay, explained further. Yeah, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخرى. And before that, sorry, لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخرى وعلى الذين يطيقون. And then Allah Jalla wa Ala repeated that again. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Yeah, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرَ So two times. So the only exemption, okay, if you are ill or you are on your journey. Yes, and as Ibn Abbas said, 
that the pregnant lady and the breastfeeding lady is considered to be an ill person or it is okay connected or or or, or given the ruling of the ill person now allah jalla wa ala says what fa'iddatun min ayyamin ukhar yeah in the first ayah wa ala alladhina yutiquna fidyatun ta'am miskin fa man tatawwa khayran fa huwa khayrun lah this was mansukh abrogated and the second ayah tayyib wa man kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin fa'iddatun min ayyamin ukhar yuridu allah bikum al yusra so if you are ill or you are traveling and you could not fast fa'idda means make it up later yeah this is the opinion of the vast majority of scholars only very few contemporary scholars said otherwise so therefore no you must not you she should try you she must make those days up later I, alhamdulillah in this country there is yani a room for us by fasting in shorter days yeah alhamdulillah yeah jazakallah khair sheikh so that connects with another question a sister had asked that she takes insulin and previously has successfully fasted but this year had made, doctors have told her not to fast on a precautionary basis she's saying should i believe in the qadr of allah and still fast and give it a go or should i not do it i think yeah. it's the same same yeah thing. bismillah rahman rahim brothers and sisters let us just yeah uh, speak in a very uh, calm way not an emotional way okay i came to know through many questions that i received that the doctors because this is their profession as if you are yeah as if you ask a lawyer about something then he will just make life difficult for you yeah because he is a lawyer this is his profession and this is what this is how his mind is uh, is set same thing with doctors yeah doctors they say no don't do this don't 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 do this don't do this while by the way doctors are the worst in terms of looking after their health yeah and they say that because they are doctors they think that they are not going to be affected anyway sorry for our doctors yeah we should not have said this now because they are we're clapping doing, them at the moment yeah and during the pandemic they are doing a very good job to be honest with you and uh, may allah jalla wa ala reward the muslims and may allah jalla wa ala make it easy for everyone muslims and non muslims mm -hmm. yeah they are doing a great job i do apologize okay <laughs> my dear doctors but that okay uh, <coughs> i'm talking about something else yeah I'm, i'm talking about it from a technical perspective so the doctors they will say that oh no don't fast because if you fast uh, you will be harmed etc yeah i really want you to investigate that carefully whether fasting will really uh, be harmful will risk your health and how far that will go yeah because i remember a statement by sheikh ali tantawi he said that i had more than 30 illnesses i went to all doctors i consulted them etc i did not find better than fasting for my health yes there are some cases where okay you can't fast then allah jalla wa'ala gave us the excuse but try this is my advice try it might work and allah is there to help yeah if it doesn't work then خلاص you have the exemption from allah jalla wa ala as he says yurid allah bikum al yusra wa la yurid bikum al usr and by the way here some of uh, the some of the imams scholars etc when they answer these things because here we are living in the west and we are afraid that we might be you know uh, attacked by you know media or etc uh, or being bashed by by some people then immediately they say well no no yeah see if the doctors say that this will risk your health then just abandon it okay uh, stop it because islam is the deen of ease islam is the 
uh, dean of preserving life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they jump on uh, into this band in order to, you know, just defend Islam. Here I'm not. Okay, Islam doesn't need someone to defend it. Islam, alhamdulillah, is the best way of life. This pandemic has proven that Islam is the most comprehensive way that can deal with all problems. Yeah? yeah. So uh, this is my advice. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, sir. Okay. Um, what do you think, what should I do if I uh, missed fasts before I started practicing Islam? I was a Muslim, but I wasn't fasting. What should I do? And a connected question is, what do you do if you didn't pay the fidya in previous years when you couldn't fast? Yeah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If a person uh, was not practicing Islam and he missed number of fasts, uh, see, we advise him to do tawbah. Yeah. This is the first thing and this is the most important thing. And as I'm saying this, brothers, some people they want something uh, tangible. So they will uh, maybe make up those days that they missed. And then after that, they will not make tawbah. They think, khalas, we did it. No, tawbah is the most important thing. Yeah? Tawbah is the key thing when you uh, commit such sin. Now, I advise, along with that tawbah, to fast, uh, optional fast, as much as you can, with the intention that it may compensate for those days that you have missed. Okay? As much as you can. Estimate that how many days you missed, uh, 30 days a month, uh, two months for two years, etc. And just keep fasting as much as you can. Also, if yani, really you want to uh, be sincere in your tawbah, give also sadaqa as much as you can. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to give you some quick fires, hopefully. I assume they're quick fires, Sheikh, but will, I guess we'll find out. A couple of medical ones. Uh, COVID testing is done by swabs in the nostrils and throat. Does this procedure invalidate your fast? Uh, if yes, is there a qada or kafara uh, also that we should give? Um, yeah, so we'll stop. Yeah, so the COVID, the test, they, yes, they, they put it in the, in the nozzle, not in the uh, mouth. The nostril. Anyway. Yeah. And or they can do it at the back of the throat or the, the yeah inshallah the no inshallah it won't break your fast okay. Yeah. Okay. do eardrops nullify your fast airdrops yeah. air eardrops yeah yeah uh, inshallah they won't yeah inshallah they won't exactly yeah. Yeah, does brushing your teeth nullify your fasts yeah i strongly prefer brothers and sisters you brush your teeth without the toothpaste yeah Yani, okay, come on. I brush my teeth without toothpaste. Don't say that you can't. Try it. Yeah? And I say to brothers and sisters, you need to keep the hygiene of your mouth all the time. So when it comes to Ramadan, we all fast, Yani. Okay, alhamdulillah, we don't have that bad smell because we are observing the hygiene of our mouth. It's Okay, all the time. Although I have many problems in my, my teeth. Yeah, I lost yeah, some of them. But I, I, generally, I observe the hygiene of my mouth. So during fasting, will, yeah, uh, inshallah, it will not be that bad hygiene. Why do you need to? Why some people, even if some scholars said, yeah, that this is allowed. Why are you insisting on that if that might risk your fasting? Yeah. Okay, again, some more unwritten, non-medical quickfire ones. Uh, can I lead Taraweeh on a Quran app on my phone? Yeah, inshallah, yep. there is no problem. We have given an, ex uh, an explanation for that. Yep. To try to minimize uh, your movement. Exactly. Yeah. Is it permissible for my sons who are 8 and 11 to lead us in Taraweeh prayer? Yeah, uh, some scholars did not allow that. Okay, but most of the scholars, yani the Hanafis are a bit strict about it, about especially the eight years. Yeah, but the other scholars are lenient. 
because of uh, hadith uh, uh, because of hadith salama yeah they are a bit lenient with that okay so I, I, I have no problem. I myself, I don't see any problem with that. Yeah. Exactly. Either the eight or the 11. Some Hanafis they don't, they have a problem in eight, but they don't have a problem in uh, 11 because maybe he passed the age of 10 and Qaraba, yani al Bulugh. Yeah. The age of eight is definitely after uh, the, 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 the Tamiz, the sin of Tamiz. So, if he memorized the Quran, so inshallah, and it means that he is يعني, a, a person who can distinguish what is right, what is wrong. So he can, inshallah, lead. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we've got slightly full circle. So I'm just going to repeat the Tarawi question again on this because I think this is going to come up. Is it permissible to pray Tarawi via Zoom? And can we follow the Imam that way? Yeah. No, don't do that. Right. Yeah. Don't do right. that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about parents who have passed away. Should the children fast and make up for their fasts of their parents on their behalf um, if their parents had missed any fasts in the in the last stage of their life? Yeah. And one of the ladies came to the Prophet and she said that my mother passed away uh, and she missed some fasts. The Prophet said, yeah, fast on behalf of your mother. This is provided that the mother or the father wanted to fast, but it is very unfortunate that some parents, if they didn't want to fast, you may fast on their behalf, but I don't know whether that will benefit them or not. Very yeah. Impressive. When are you too elderly to fast? Yeah. See, even uh, if you, uh, based on the ayah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا وَعَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ The scholar said that the elderly person who cannot fast, yeah, he cannot fast, or he will become, is likely that he will become uh, ill, yes, if he fast, or it is extremely difficult for him to fast, then they are exempted and they can pay the fidya. Otherwise, they must fast. Yeah. So I've got one eye on the time um, and we'll take this one last question, inshallah, because I think this will be really, really beneficial for everybody. Um, with the situation that we're going to be in this Ramadan, where we're going to be spending a lot of time in our houses, what would you suggest is a beneficial evening routine in, in the Ramadan? Yeah, this is a very good question. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. First of all, brothers, uh, in the evening, let us start from the, just before uh, the Maghrib, yeah? Uh, try, if you can, pray Asr, and then after Asr, stay station in your place until the Maghrib time. Yes, try this. Why is this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لا يزال أحدكم في صلاة من تضر الصلاة ولا تزال الملائكة تقول له uh, or the ملائكة will make استغفار for him as far as he is sitting in his place after صلاة. So the ملائكة will be saying أستغفر الله أستغفر الله for you or Allah, oh Allah forgive him. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah, about a ribat. A ribat is staying in the front lines in jihad against the enemies. We have the civil ribat. The civil ribat is staying in your place for salah, waiting for the next salah. Yeah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this raises the, 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 the grades in Jannah. Okay, five. So, do that and encourage your family to do that from Maghrib all the way until from Asr all the way until Maghrib and read Quran make this period as a period for recitation of Quran now if you can't do this make a circle with your children with your family to read Quran if they know how to read Quran let them specify that time for Quran and stay in their places yeah, inshallah, this will substitute the i'tikaf. And then when the 
the, the, the Maghrib time comes, do a congregational, yes, uh, or do iftar as a group with all members. Don't let anyone just to break his fast in front of the TV, yeah, and everyone by himself. Stay, okay, together to break your fast. Just before breaking the fast, it is good to raise your hands to make dua and your children to make dua. You can make a congregational dua. It will be very, very spiritual. You know that the Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, the dua of a fasting person is accepted. Okay, so do dua uh, at that time. Yeah, in one narration, the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَذَلِكَ عَنْدَ فِطْرُ And that is the time for, okay, for the dua to be accepted. Break your fast. Then don't jump into the meal quickly, brothers and sisters. Some people, they jump as if they were starving for years. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, pray your Maghrib Salah in congregation. Either you lead or your children or make a rota among yourselves to lead. Yeah, then after that, don't rush into uh, yani the dining hall into to, to have your meal. No, sit, relax, let the, the dates yani, uh, do their job in your stomach or let your sto stomach absorb the benefits of the dates and water. Yeah, and make your adhkar, okay? Uh, uh, do your tasbih properly and then after that pray your sunnah in a calm way I strongly advise you to read the last three verses or two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and then go to the meal after the meal don't watch TV these bad programs if you want watch a program that is beneficial for you and your family and maybe you can discuss that then after that, okay, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say one important thing, subhanAllah, I forgot it. When the Maghrib time comes, raise the Adhan. Yeah, raise the Adhan for all your Salah, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, always raise the Adhan. Even if there is a sister that she's living with her mother, Okay, some scholars said, yes, you know, women should not raise the Adhan, but other scholars said, no, women can raise the Adhan. And I like the statement of Ibn Umar when he was asked about women to raise the Adhan. He said, he became angry and he said, do you want me to stop, to stop them from dhikr of Allah Jalla wa Ala? Do you want me to stop them from dhikr of Allah Jalla wa Ala? Yeah. So raise the adhan. The adhan in the house is a source of barakah. Yeah? The shayateen will be kicked out. The angels will come and they will be praying behind you when you raise the adhan. Yeah? Okay? Uh, and then uh, raise the adhan for Isha. Pray sunnah for Isha. Sit down a little bit. Start your Isha salah. One of you to lead. After Isha salah, one of you to lead taraweeh yeah if you can uh, from your mushaf uh, otherwise if from your mushaf as we have explained and then pray your witter now if you can delay your witter until the last part of the night before you do your sahur yeah this will be even better it is not necessarily that you pray all the taraweeh, including the witr, in one time. No, you can, yani, uh, actually it is better to leave some of it before fajr, okay, or before your sahur. And then wake up for your sahur, have your sahur, make it light, don't make it heavy meal as many people do, and make adhan for fajr, yes, uh, pray your sunnah for fajr which is among the most important sunnahs that you have to pray and and uh, wait maybe for some time then lead uh, fajr salah yeah and then after fajr salah if you don't yani if you can i strongly advise 
that you stay reading Quran, making your adhkar until shuruq, and then wait for a few minutes after shuruq, continue your adhkar, uh, continue your recitation of Quran, and then pray two rakah, and then go to bed. Wallahi, if you do that on a regular basis, that will be maybe more spiritual than uh, than uh, spending your time in the masjid uh, if the masjid are open. Yeah, and that will be a good compensation for the loss of the masjid or the closure of the masjid. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Barakallah fee for all the advice. And uh, I think it's absolutely spot on that we're finishing on this positive note because people are, all, all you, a, lot of, a lot of the time you're hearing from, uh, from brothers and sisters that, you know, they're not going to get what they're normally used to. Uh, as we said before, we've got to be optimistic. We've got to look at the positives. And we've got to exactly. look at Allah closes one door. He opens so many exactly. other. Exactly, yeah. Those and the, I always say successful people, they look for chances to achieve. Absolutely. Failing people will lose its chances and they will keep giving excuses. Absolutely, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. On, on that positive note, inshallah, just, have we really, Wallahi, Jazakallah khair uh, for your time, Sheikh. Uh, may I reward you, may I accept from you, and uh, I'm sure the brothers and sisters have massively, massively um, learned a lot and benefited, inshallah, from the advice, and uh, this all helps to. Give us a more fulfilling Ramadan, inshallah, as well. So, brothers and sisters, inshallah, if you've benefited from this, which I'm sure you have, as we have, certainly, um, then please uh, look out for all of the other events that we will be doing during the course of uh, Ramadan as well. Uh, so, um, look out for the website uh, on iceeurope.org. Uh, um, and many of you will have been attending the Maintaining a Happy Marriage seminar that we have every Tuesday at 8.30. We'll be holding it this Tuesday as well. So, make sure that you tune in, inshallah, and take benefit from Sheikh Haytham and the other shuyukh as well at, at ICE that we have. Um, and through the course of Ramadan, there will be many, many things that, uh, inshallah, that will be coming your way. As I said, if you benefit from the, uh, the different uh, forums that are held by uh, ICE, inshallah, the, the different uh, uh, webinars, etc., and all the different things that we do, then make sure that you, donate, that you go to uh, donate.iceeurope.org and do donate to the projects, uh, inshallah, support us so that we can continue, inshallah, giving you uh, uh, um, all of the advice, inshallah, and access to the shiuk, etc., and, and really and allow us to make our uh, not just Ramadan but our lives as Muslims more fulfilling as well. So please ensure that you do that. Uh, again, Jazakumullah khairan to everybody for tuning in, and inshallah, we look forward to seeing you again in the course of Ramadan and beyond that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.